Hello, fellow alchemists. Welcome back to our series on the Elixir programming language. Today, I'm going to introduce you to strings and binaries. So you may be asking yourself, why, why are we talking about strings and binaries? Well, just like structs are built on top of maps, strings in Elixir are actually built on top of binaries, which come from Erlang. And I'm going to introduce to you and talk to you why this is starting now. So originally, Erlang only had something called a character list. Now what that is, is it's just a, actually a number. Um, so when you have a list of numbers of integers, uh, they actually can be interpreted as either a list of integers or a list of numbers which are translated to an ASCII character. Um, for those of you who don't know ASCII, it's uh, some numbers between, I believe, 0 to 127. And they try to represent all of the uppercase and lowercase uh, letters and numbers in the uh, English alphabet. Now, this works just fine um, initially, but the problem is it doesn't support encodings like UTF-8, which requires a lot more data than 120 bits. And that's where things get quite complicated because now we're in a global world. We need to be able to represent more than just uh, the English alphabet. Not everybody knows English. And so several standards have come out and the defining standard is UTF-8, which Elixir strongly supports. And so they made up this data type called uh, string, which is a UTF-8 compliant um, representation in binary data of text. And I'm going to show you in a little bit uh, how that all works. And now what I want to say is that uh, because this is Elixir and Erlang, uh, mostly Elixir right now, we can actually still pattern match on binaries. And pattern matching in binary can be very interesting and very beneficial for people who need to deal with uh, checking out binary data, like checking certain bits, making sure that um, certain bits or bytes are of a certain size and certain format, and it makes life a lot easier. We won't go into that in this, uh, in these examples for this lesson, but maybe in the future. Just wanted to let you know that uh, if you do deal with this kind of stuff, looking at Elixir and Erlang to check out binary data is definitely very, very beneficial. And so let's go ahead and let's get started with some examples to kind of show you how they all work together. So here's our project, and I'm just going to open up IEX. We're not going to use anything in the project. I'm just going to show you uh, what's possible right out of the the, uh, the gate. And so there is, like I said, there is um, character lists, which are denoted by using single quotation strings. This is a character list. And a string is using double quotes. Now these to you may look similar, but if I do this, you'll see they're actually not the same at all. Now, how is that? Well, because this is a character list, okay? This is a uh, list of uh, this is a list of uh, numbers, integers that are between zero to one twenty-seven. And this one can support a lot more. We can actually support uh, Chinese and, and and other kinds of languages, other kinds of characters. Um, and underneath is underneath uh, here. So what I want to also want to show you is that uh, the letter H can actually be resented by the number 104 in binary. And the way I can show you that is if you take H and you append, this is the append operator for strings and binaries, and you try to append, this is a binary of zero data. So to note, to note the binary is two left uh, less thans and two right greater thans. And you'll see as there's a 104 over here. Okay. And there's also a special operator, which the question mark is, and we use the letter H to see what the number is. It's 104. So the letter H in UTF-8 is represented by 104 in decimal, 
uh, which has different representation, obviously, in, in, in binary. Um, but we can actually break apart a string quite easily and show you some more. So in the string module, there is a function called code points, which will break apart a string into the different characters, what they call code points. So you can see that every single character is represented differently. Um, and remember that H104 uh, is a string, right? So I can actually show you there's a valid function. That letter H is a string. And also the binary representation of letter H, which is 104, is a valid string. But if I use that null byte uh, character, it should not be Oh, sorry, it is a, it is a valid string because zero is, is, is nothing, but it's also a valid string. But if I just put some random data into here, uh, I don't know, one, two, three, four, hmm. maybe if I make it very complicated, so four, five, six, two, three, eight, there we go. That binary data is not valid UTF-8 string data. And what else I can do too, which is also quite interesting, is using pattern matching, you can actually force this to come up as UTF-8. Which is very interesting, right? So you can see the code point of 104 is uh, H. And so we can see the code point of 1 is the number 1, the binary 1. All right, try a different one. Uh, 127 is backslash D. Not quite sure what that is. Um, I don't know. We can try 117. It's letter U. And again, we can check that by doing U, appending the no bytes, and see it's 117. So you can kind of see how how they're, they're very much quite related, right? The string uh, data type in Elixir is built on top of the Erlang data type of binary, and that's how they can coexist. Now, for the most part, if you're dealing with Elixir, you're not gonna have to deal with character lists unless you're gonna be directly integrating with Erlang libraries. And so you shouldn't need to worry about that for most things, but just know that character lists are mostly there to interface with uh, Erlang libraries back and forth. And there's some some nice convenience functions, right? So there's a to char list, I believe. Yep. So if you put in hello, you'll see what comes back as a char list of hello. And this should equal this, which it does. And again, you can also use, um, there should be a string, not to string, is there? No, probably char list. So I don't usually use char list. There should be a two string. Yep, we can probably just do this. And you're gonna get the string version of this. Okay. So this is just a very, very uh, simple introduction to strings and binaries and Elixir to kind of give you an idea of, of what they are and, and how they work. And sometimes you're gonna see string and binary interchangeable and that's because underneath the hood they are interchangeable for the most part but i hope this kind of clears up where they're not right and so again this is alan from plangora and please subscribe if you haven't uh, we release a new video every wednesday and friday and so i'll see you then next time thanks bye